think we're live. Yep. Hi, everyone. Hi, you guys. Um, for those of you who aren't going to be watching this while we're actually live, we are going to post it. So um, we're going to basically read a snippet or two or three, however much we decide to do, of Jillian's book. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah, I'm excited to share it with you guys. Um, I think you guys can all relate and just enjoy the story for what it is. Yeah. But um, in case you're wondering why I'm drinking Capri Sun at 31 years old, <laughs> it's because mm -hmm. my sugar is low right now. So got to find sugar anyway. Yep. So I guess we'll wait a couple of minutes. And um, we have the phone sideways because it's just easier to get both of us in the, in the shot. So we're going to... Give it a minute I don't know if two. anybody's gonna join, but um, this it will says be up that they're notifying to, uh, our fo your followers. So to see later on we'll if see. you're interested. Yep. I guess we'll start from the from the beginning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. I read you guys the first opening part. Shall we start? <laughs> sure. Sorry. Okay. So let's get the ball rolling here. Jill, we are here. Wake up. I feel like I have been sleeping for an eternity, but it's only been an hour. I feel exhausted, but managed to open up my eyes. I unbuckle my seatbelt and jump out of our black Toyota 4Runner truck. That New York City smell fills my nostrils. It's a strong mix of city bus exhaust and hot pretzels coming from the corner, but not for long. We walk up 7th Avenue and into the 10-story building. We approach the check-in desk. My father sits down with all of my bags, and my mother takes my hand as we approach the desk that says, Check in here. <laughs> a woman asks me, Young lady, what is your name? I respond, Jillian M. Monatello. Jillian, what is your date of birth? I answer, May 4th, 1990. The woman smiles at me and places a plas plastic bracelet on my wrist. It is a bracelet like no other, one I have never seen before. It has my name on it. It is not a nameplate bracelet like my older family members have, with their names in gold and iced out in diamonds. It is made of plain plastic, with my full name on it, including my date of birth, and it even has my doctor's name on it. Yes, my amazing doctor's name is on it. This is making me wonder why I have a bracelet with both my name and his name on it. <clears throat> the woman proceeds to tell us to take the elevator up to the fourth floor and to wait at the nurse's station. The hallway leading to the elevator is dark, and we are the only ones walking down it. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a few kids playing in the playroom. I think to myself, this looks like fun. I see toys all over the floor, and the room is very colorful, with some of my favorite colors, lavender and green. The sunshine is beaming through the windows this morning, but it is also a pretty cold winter day. I notice there is a lot of chaos on this floor. There are a lot of people in white coats running around, and I hear other children crying on the opposite side from where we are standing. There are kids with tubing coming out of their arms and feet. Poles are being pushed around throughout the floor, and they have bags and tubing hanging from them. As my eyes follow the tubing attached to the pole, I notice the tubing runs from the pole all the way to the children. One of the boys is trying to run away from his mother as she does her best to hold him. This is when I think to myself, maybe this is much more than just the fun I saw in the playroom when arriving. For me, this is a whole new scene and pretty scary for a five-year-old. So, as you guys can see, Jill was five years old when this was all happening. And this is from her perspective. And, um, yeah, I mean, when I first read it, I was pretty impressed. What, were you, what was going on in your mind when you were writing when this? When I was writing it, I actually was kind of bored one day in the hospital. I was there for like a 14-day admission. And um, I just thought to myself, like, what's a good way to share my story and I took my phone out and I opened up like a document app and I just started writing yeah and um the first draft got deleted on accident I mm -hmm. must have fallen asleep after one of the medications I got it was kind of drowsy and I deleted on accident and then um I started rewriting it and realized that I can make it a lot more descriptive where people can relate to it and not just uh see just oh a hospital room where yeah. you can actually picture it and so yeah so i see cousin dave is on there yvette's on there oh i can't see Essa just told yeah me. and yvette's sister 
Um, I don't know when they popped in because I wasn't really looking at the phone. So did you guys hear any of the the beginning of the story or no? I mean, we will be posting this, right? We're going to post yeah, this Yeah, 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 it'll be posted. Oh, she said so awesome, so I guess maybe <laughs> maybe oh. she heard it. Dave, you you're still there, Dave? It'll be posted, and then um, we're actually, after this, going to read it on Rosario's page. Yeah, we're going to go live on my page, on too. His, because I don't obviously have everyone that he has. And... Should I read a little bit more? You guys want to hear a little bit more? <laughs> Dave said hi. Hi, Dave. If we get one thumbs up, we'll read a little bit more. Okay, Dave. I'm here. Okay, Dave's here. <laughs> All right, so I guess I guess we'll read uh, another maybe paragraph or so, right? Sure. All right, so. Before coming here, I was told I would spend the next 14 days in a place called the hospital because I was sick. Mommy told me that the hospital is going to make me better. I saw my mother was upset as we were packing our stuff last night. And now I have an idea as to why she seems sad. To be honest, I'm a bit petrified, but I don't want my parents to know. I smile and make like everything is fun, just like that playroom. As my mind drifts, I think about being outside in the busy streets of Manhattan. I wish I was downstairs asking Dad to get an ice cream soda from the store across the street for me. Mom says, Jillian, let's go. They are bringing you up to your room. As we walk down the hall... There are a bunch of rooms on each side of on each side as well as against the back wall. My room is in the far right corner. It is a pretty large room. It looks much different than I expected. It is plain and has a very clean sterile smell. The bed is like nothing I have ever seen before. I am intrigued by all of its buttons and all of the different positions it can adjust to. The TV will take us some time to get used to and we also have a pale pink telephone on the nightstand. <clears throat> My room is private, meaning it doesn't have to be shared with another patient. The only good thing about my room is the view of the busy 7th Avenue. For as long as I can remember, I love, the, I love the streets of Manhattan, but I would love to just be beyond this window. This is when I learned the meaning of the saying my dad always says, every day out of the hospital is a beautiful day. After a few minutes of taking in my new surroundings, my nurse comes back in and says, Jillian, we have to put an IV into your hand. I turn to my parents and say, a what? They say, an intravenous. It goes into your vein, and this is how you will be getting your medication. I look at them and can't say much beside, okay. My nurse introduces me to a nurse that specializes in putting IVs. She is very nice, and she takes me into another room, which is down the hall. She introduces herself, and I say, it's nice to meet you, Colleen. I sit in a chair similar to the ones that they use when drawing blood. Daddy comes in with me, and Mommy hasn't gotten out of the chair yet. I ask Mom if she is coming, too, and she tells me she is going to stay in the room. Mommy explains that this, that she isn't going to come in with us because it is going to be a lot for her to handle. She tells me that she will be staying with me and be by my side for the next 14 days straight. I understand, and I walk down the hall. I think to myself how 14 days is such a long time. This is longer than when we go on vacation. This will be the longest time I will be away from my own home. Colleen begins the procedure by tying the tourniquet nice and tight, and the smell of alcohol fills my nostrils. She tells me that it will just be a pinch and asks me to try and stay as still as possible. Well, this pinch feels much worse, and I let out a very loud yell. The entire floor must have heard me. To a child, it hurts like hell, and tears come streaming down my little cheeks. Now I'm starting to feel the same pain the other children on the floor feel, especially the kids I saw when I came off of that elevator for the very first time. After a few minutes, I realize getting an IV isn't too bad, but my life will be challenging, and this is just the beginning of what is to come for one living with cystic fibrosis. I think that was really well written. Oh, I gotta you. give it to you. What do you guys <laughs> it think? It took me some time, you know, to... It's a poor connection, okay. She said, whoa, she writes so well. I could literally picture the room. Yeah, and Dave that's what said, I wanted to, to do, give you guys like a visual. Dave said, I remember that part with your mom. Wow, I think she shared it with me. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. See, we have some confirmation yeah, from is. Dave that your memory is pretty sharp. <laughs> See? That's wow. awesome. So, yeah, that what I... do you think? Do we end it here? 
and let you guys wonder until the book comes out. <laughs> or we could always and do just, another. I guess to give them an idea, um, I started off explaining like the scene because it was so like, not like traumatizing, but it was so visual to me. And then we do go back to birth mind, you know? and we bring you back to when I was born and just my life up until then. And then once we get back to this part, the rest of the story will just begin like a regular story. Yeah, so she kind of rewinds from being five years old, which is the initial introduction into the story. And then she rewinds to her birth, basically. And then from there, it jumps back to five years old. Yeah, and then you continues. guys will learn why I wound up in the hospital, how it came about and... Uh, what made the doctor, you know, make that decision and all of that. But this book is a lot more than just about oh, yeah. cystic fibrosis. It's, it's just about, everything, about yeah. everything in life. You guys will see from school to sports to friendships and family and, um, yeah, just, just life. <laughs> They've and said, so. I also said that Jill shouldn't play with the buttons. Because <laughs> <laughs> you liked all the buttons on the, on the bed and stuff. Oh, yeah. But, all right, I guess, what do you think? Yeah, I mean... And the here, you did a great job. Reading thank you, it thank you. And I'm not, I'm not usually a, a, a good reader when people are like listening and stuff, but I would have read, but I kind of can't. Oh, especially see in school. Well, oh my so gosh, in school I used to get so nervous when the teacher been. called on me to read. It's crazy, but yeah, you got another awesome Jill. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> but thank, thank you guys for joining. Um, yeah, I'll be going live probably next couple of minutes and on, on my page. page. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Have a good night. Yeah, good night, guys. Thank you.